Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Stogie Geeks, welcome to episode 348. I am your host, Joe Hozempa. This is segment two. We are dealing with sticks of the week. The stick of the week is the La Custare Central Fino Sun Grown number 60. Uh, super cool stick. Can't wait to talk about that. Nelson's got some sticks that he's been smoking. And if you're just tuning in, you're a little late. We had a super cool interview with Lee Marsh from Stolen Throne Cigars. So you want to check that out. Visit them um, at stogiegeeks.com forward slash 348. You'll have all your show notes there. Uh, throw that Stolen Throne Cigars into Facebook. You'll be able to follow them and uh, catch up on the episode. And then there you go. I'm smoking this uh, Christmas gift here. Uh, he, that Nelson had given me, uh, with with the with the with the with the ribbon, over here. So, um, yeah. See if Ezra I Zion Red Velvet. There you go. So that's what I'm gonna smoke right now. Uh, and check that out. But Nelson, you have some news too. Yeah, if you want to hear some news, I got some news. A couple interesting <sighs> points. While, that I, while I light and get situated, because I'm sitting in your spot. Uh, you're sitting in a remote spot. We're right. trying to be safe. I'm left-handed. I finally found a, the the microphone that'd be in position without me having to call it. <laughs> yeah, did you? I I always hit it when I'm in that seat. I always hit it with my stogie. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we'll have to work on that. Well, um, you won't be in the studio for the next couple of episodes because of all of our lockdown. So we don't have to worry about it till 2021. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll we'll put that on the list of stuff to do here at G Unit Studios. But anyway, um. What? Uh, oh, give us the news. Yeah, I'm gonna start this. Sure. Small, uh, small, but I think uh, a, a lot of uh, boutique guys and even some non-boutique uh, smokers will uh, be interested in this. So, uh, Matt Booth from Room Run Room 101 came out with the um, the Death Bucket previously, and that was a a big sellout. Uh, very popular cigar. Um, very uh, unattainable right now. They're pretty much gone. But the good news is. Um, they're coming out with the Death Bucket 2. They've teamed up with the Provada Club, um, where they're going to be offering it, I believe, initially just to members. Um, but then they do have a shop within Provada, and I know that the Provada Club, typically what they do with Overage is they throw it up on their shop. So it's the kind of thing where you're going to have to you're gonna have to follow it if you want them. But I know there's a lot of Death Bucket fans out there. Um, so the Death Bucket 2, I expect, will have uh, as much of a following as the first Death Bucket did. Are you familiar with that, Joe? Have you heard of the Death Bucket? Yep. Actually, I think you gave me one. Yep. Right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I'm trying to pour my beer. You keep asking know, me questions. Like... Hold on, hold on. Right? I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to make sure I, was, uh, I don't want to spill my beer on my computer. I don't think be done. Right? Me all over now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had I've had a death bucket. Yeah, I've reviewed it, it here. Out, uh, here. The first run only had eighteen. I think initially, actually, it was seventy five hundred, and then they added ten thousand more. So it was just under eighteen thousand of the um, the death bucket one. I guess it will now be called. Um, I haven't seen. I've, I've I dug around. I couldn't find any information on how many death bucket twos are coming out, um, but they definitely should be coming out uh, before the end of the year. And that will only be through the uh, Cigar Club, Initially right? through Provada Club, yeah. All right, cool. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, also in the news. Um, oh, you just burned through think... the news. Cool. I'll stop my stick. Go ahead. Yeah, no, you keep going. So <laughs> uh, in CRA news, CRA comes out with their um, annual CRA uh, package of cigars. Uh, and this year is also uh, a great deal. They're usually a really great deal. They package some premium sticks um, for an affordable price. Uh, the price this year is $129 and change. 
Um, the CRA package will include the Alec Bradley Mundial, the Ann Ashton VSG, uh, Diamond Crown Maximus, um, a Fuente, um, either an Angel Share or a 20 year, uh, 20th anniversary, I believe, will be included. So there's apparently um, an option there. You're going to get an Andalusian Bull from LFD, uh, a Labijou from my father, the uh, uh, Leva Series V Milanio, a Padron, uh, the Black Number 200. Rocky Patel ALR second edition Toro and the Tatuaje, Tatuaje Great Pumpkin. So that's so quite a number of sticks. You're going to get 10 awesome cigars in, the, in that package. Um, I usually get this myself. Um, I just think it's a, it's a great deal. Um, and you get some, some great premium sticks for, uh, for 130 bucks. If you want to know about that deal, email Nelson at stogiegeeks.com and he'll give you the link on how to get into that action absolutely uh, i'd be like i don't know how to get into that action so what are you smoking joe oh the christmas gift the velvet what did you write a review on <laughs> better question <laughs> i honestly thought you were talking oh yeah how we're is, doing a show how is that red velvet though uh, like uh, first first pop give me the, um Hold on. I know I'm I know oh. I'm gonna get an honest answer. Uh smoke content is dense. Retro hail is clean. Ooh. And searching for some flavor. But I'm only I just lit it, so hold right, on. Right, right. So as we go, we'll go there. Um yeah. So uh stick of the week is La Custore Central Fino Sun Grown. Number 60, uh, the wrapper is Ecuadorian Sun Grown. Binder is Dominican. Uh, your filler is Dominican Lajero, aged five years. Super important to notice that because we're going to make a point on that. Um, it's ranked as medium to full. I, I would say uh, if you're a beginner smoker, sure. Uh, if, if, if you're intermediate, you know, you've been smoking for a year or plus, you can kind of say it's, it's medium. Uh, its strength is in the retro hail. Its taste is is fully in the retro hail. Uh, however, you don't have to work it in order to get the actual taste if you're one of those smokers who do not retro hail. Uh, super cool price point. You're around eight eight change uh, there, plus applicable taxes across wherever you live. Um, it's a six by fifty Toro, um, and I mean, what can I say, right? Like, you, when you first start to stick, you 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 get like that. Uh, it's almost to me on my palate. It's a salty, sun grown, the uh, the the dry light um, is 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 relevant. You get an old school tobacco flavor. Um, Acousta Ray is is a very older company. Uh, and partnered with uh, JC Newman, um, and you know I get kind of like a like a saltiness from there with a little bit of earth. Um, Retro hail, like I said, is really where you get kind of like a little bit of the pepper component there. Uh, smoke density, great flavor. I'm not really getting a lot of like cocoa or espresso from that. I'm getting like like true sun-grown flavor with like like old-fashioned tobacco and i've defined that in previous episodes too like just like classic classic smoke doesn't break the bank um you can certainly grab a bunch of these pass them out with friends i'd give it a box split with a friend because if you're not if sun-grown is really not your thing um or you really haven't gotten into any of the sun-growns uh, this is certainly a cigar that you really want to kind of uh, get into. Uh, as you get halfway in uh, through it, you get a little bit of complex flavors that um, are more relevant with the retro hail. So my Stogie Geeks rating is box split with a friend. Very good. Have you had one? I have not. And then, you know, it's funny. Uh, the thing I get out of these reviews is I end up smoking new sticks that I haven't because you recommended them. 
yeah, I, I, I really enjoy these sticks uh, there. Uh, uh, full disclosure, I've had like more than a box. I've probably had oh, wow. two boxes within the last six months, right? But, you know, when, when you go into it, it, it's a super cool morning stick and it's just different. Um, and there are a few sticks that stick, no, no pun intended, that stick out in front of me <laughs> when it comes to sun grown. Uh, that's Drew Estate FSG for sure. And this is my second, like, if you were, if we were to do a tutorial on, like, let's experiment with sun grown, like, this is where you get, like, the most flavor. So from my experience, Drew Estate FSG, La Custode Sun Grown, uh, if you want to experiment with sun grown, that's really where you should start. Nice. Well, we talked a little. Um, did we talk last week about the Fuente eight five eight risotto too? Yes. A lot of sun grown discussions on Stovigi. Great, all great cigars. Well, this week um, I'm going to be talking about the Dunbarton Tobacco Sober Mesa Brulee Blue. I know we talked about um, the brulees on here before. Uh, I think I talked about in the news a while ago about the STFU exclamation pack that Steve Saka came out with from Dunbarton Tobacco um, to basically debate people on whether or not his uh, sober missiles were dipped or not. Um, jury's still out, I think. I think a lot of uh, stogie geeks out there are not sure whether it or not it is. I don't know that his package actually solved it. He claims it's not, so I guess we'll go with that. Uh, but they came out uh, this year with the Sober Mesa Brulee Blue, uh, which I've been enjoying throughout 2020. And uh, I think I gave, uh, I think it's in your little package there, Joe. I think I gave you one of those as well. Already smoked it and ready to comment on it after you're done. Oh, you already smoked it? <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. I'm a freaking pirate. I'm a pirate, dude. You gave me the bag. It's gone. Today is 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 your bag day. Like, the, that's, that's, that's today. I gave Go Joe on. a bag of cigars at 9 a.m. this morning, and Eastern so far, Standard he time. saying I already smoked it. <laughs> and it's now, well, it's only 2.50, but yeah. yeah. Right. Go on. Go on. Go on, ready for full commentary. Wow. Wow. Um, so, uh, the, again, it's the Brulee Blue. I had the um, the Grand Corona, which is the same steak, Joe, you should have. Um, obviously, I got sweetness um, right off the beginning uh, with it, even on the cold draw. Uh, so I'm not going to go into whether or not it's sweet or, uh, sweetened or not, but it, it was definitely sweetness, um, even on cutting and lighting initially. So you get that right away. You get a little bit of pepper. Um, at least I got a little pepper as I was going into it, and it starts to blend in with that sweetness, um, I'd say almost throughout the first half, um, although the pepper did pick up after uh, closer to the end of the first third. Uh, the composition of the stick was uh pretty nice um i i always got so far i probably smoked a dozen of these this year um razor sharp burn every time i smoke one of these which i don't know just adds to the experience for me getting that that super perfect burn on it um zero canoeing zero touch-ups um towards the end of the stick um it did get sweeter again and then it just kind of ended with like a i want to say like a leathery finish on on the end of this stick and it was for me it was a medium to full cigar um i think that's how it's advertised as well uh it does have um going back to the composition i forgot to mention it does have a pigtail on it which i know a lot of people like because you can pop that off and almost it's ready to smoke it's like a, a punch automatically on there so that's that's a nice feature on the um on the stick as well and it was about a 70 minute smoke for me so not not super super long but not super super short either so Again, I've been enjoying these throughout 2020, so I'm I'm going to give these a, a, a box worthy. But Joe, I'd, I'd love to hear you know what your take, especially since it's fresh from this morning. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> no, I'm not kidding. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, pigtail uh, just picked that off, made a bullet point effect, lit it up. Let's talk about the sweetness. Uh, yep. Be on the pre light, right? Yep. That's the word I was looking for when I was reviewing that Gusta Ray, the pre light. Right? Right? Um, cold draw. Yeah, cold draw, right? Um, it, it is a sweetness and it fades quickly. It does. 
I don't really think it's 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 sweet and tip. It's 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 that Tobacco. ready. And I venture to say, if you were to take these and house them for calendar year, year or two, that sweetness would fade, right? Yeah. I'd venture to say. Uh, I don't think it's uh, from finishing the cigar, having smoked and smoked uh, sweetened tips before. Uh, it fades pretty quickly there. So, you know, you got a lot of people with their internet hysteria uh, logging on to forums and asking him. Um, you know, Steve Saka strikes me as someone who would say, if it's not, it's not. Um, you know, he's not like trying to be Mr. Mysterious. J- no, just, no. Just my You're opinion of him. So, um, you know, it, 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 that's so I would venture to say it, it's not a sweetened tip. Uh, however, you do get an extreme sweetness on the pre-light and pre-draw for sure. Uh, you light it up, and it's slightly milder than the regular uh, Sobre Mesa, in my opinion. Uh, a little uneventful until you're, other than the sweet tip, until you're a couple inches in. And then from there, it starts to kick in. And then when it kicks in... Retro hail, super clean, a little bit of spice, um, getting some good notes on there. Um, not really so much cocoa uh, from me, but I was getting that that le- leather component that you were you got more towards the end. I was getting it yep. more towards the almost end, right? It wasn't quite the last third, uh, and then from there it just switched to just what I call like just classic tobacco. Now. It is very different from his Sobre Mesa. Oh, yeah. It's it's very different uh, there. So, Story Geeks, uh, if you're listening on audio, um, we're talking about the one. It has the same logo and everything, but in between the crown, there's like a little blue, a blue hue as opposed to the white hue, and that's the difference between this stick and the regular Sober Mesa there. Oh, uh, wait, hold on. There's a Sober Mesa, there's a bru- Sober Mesa Brulee, and then there's the Sober Mesa Brulee Blue. So now I think what you were referring to was the regular Sober Mesa Brulee. That's what you meant, right? This one. Oh, you can't see it. <laughs> I can't see that uh, shit. <laughs> uh, it's got, it's got. I'm sure, you're right. <laughs> what the hell did you give me? I gave you a blue. This is what we're talking about? Yes. Yeah. So it's got, yeah. it's got a, bu- a blue hue on it. No, but you were talking about the regular Sober Mesa. There is a Sober Mesa that is not a brulee. Gotcha. All right, See what I'm, I'm saying? Following. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the one with the blue hue is the one that we're talking about. Correct. Right? And I'm, I'm emphasizing this for the audio listeners. You know, 62% of our listeners listen to this on audio. So we have to cater to that audience. We can't just assume that everyone's watching our video. So... Uh, it's got a little bit of a, a blue hue to it, almost like a baby blue, right? And uh, like a viewer, baby boy blue, right? Uh, there. And it, it does have a sweetness to it in the beginning. Uh, a lot of that happens because you're you're getting it off of the off of the start of the cigar and then there. But it kicks into really something nice uh, there. I like the original Sobre Mesa a little bit better, my opinion. It's a little bit more meatier when it comes to... Um, profile but this cigar changes from sweet pepper good transition leather and then comes back to like classic tobacco way towards the end for me smoked it down the nub super cool stick uh i I'd, I'd i'd give it a box worthy for sure is that's, that what you gave it that's what i gave it yeah yeah i'd give it a box worthy there's no question. I have a box. I give it a box worthy. I'd also give like the regular Sober Mesa a box worthy. Like I would, I would enjoy these sticks frequently. Still doesn't I'm, beat the Umbagog or the Mikarita, in my opinion. <laughs> I love that Mikarita, and I'll tell you what that that I'm with you on that Umbagog. It's uh, it's it's a stick that people kind of overlook because it's it's on the lower end of his uh, price range. So they sure. you know by association somehow think it's not that great a stick, but. I, to your point, I think it's better than some of his other sticks. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, you have any more news? 
no. That's it. I've got another stick. Well, I, I, we didn't even talk about news. I, I had it in the back pocket just in case we needed to fill time. Nice. We, need, we never need to fill time. I mean, I could talk to five. <laughs> I could talk about my Caldwell yellow cake I smoked. Uh, is that your next stick? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Oh, all right. Um, this right. I'm going to give a shout out to Christina Barnhill. She's the, the one that sent me this uh, earlier this year. She sent me a five-pack. And I've been uh, slowly enjoying them. Uh, it's the Caldwell uh, Cigar Company Yellow Cake. I had the 4x44 um, Petite Corona. Um, the cool thing about this thing, it's a $4 stick. It's $4. Uh, it's a Corojo wrapper, uh, Dominican binder, Dominican filler. I'm going to digress for a second, Joe. We, we talked recently about those Corojo wrappers, and I'm, I'm like hooked on those now. Every, every, Everything I've bought recently has Corojo wrappers on it. I'm just, I don't know what's going on, but I, I'm really enjoying that wrapper lately. And I remember that was just something you had brought up. I think we were talking about CLE or something. Mm-hmm. And you introduced me to one of their Corojos. I can't remember which one I wanted. If it was the Asylum or the other one. Yeah, it was the, the 5x50 Asylum, which I've Asylum. always said at, way when I interviewed Tom Lazuko on Cigar Club Radio 2015. Like, dude, like, these small like this available in smaller versions is gonna be awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah. The five by fifty uh, Corojo by Asylum is it's, definitely a that was a great s- stick, super tasty stick. Yep. Uh, but so here's another one: the uh, the the Caldwell Yellow Cake. Um, I started to smoke this thing. I didn't actually get much on the cold draw. I was uh, kind of surprised. This might be one of the first times I. I almost thought I had COVID because I couldn't taste anything. Uh, but there was not, nothing coming out of it uh, as far as notes on the cold draw. So, obviously, you just started cutting and lighting to get into it. Uh, this is probably the – I think I only have one left. So, this is the fourth one I've smoked. Um, the Actually, before I get into the, the smoking of it, the, the name of it is kind of interesting. You know, Joe, you say this is a story behind every cigar. Um they call it yellow cake because it's made from um, other cigar leftovers from other lines of Caldwell, in particular, um, Long Live the King and their Eastern Standard lines. Um, so they combine those tobaccos to make these these yellow cakes. I'm not a baker. Apparently, making yellow cakes, you make it from pieces of other stuff. I have no idea how that connection was created, but that's how it got the name, apparently. Um so I finally lit it up, started smoking this thing. Um, it was pretty, pretty sweet at the beginning. I was a little surprised at how much the sweetness was. It wasn't like a brulee like we were just talking about, but um, it, it was kind of sweet. I, I almost want to say I, I wrote it down, um, graham cracker. I got like a graham cracker kind of taste. I, I don't know how else to explain it. Mixed in with like some some earthy notes, um, but it was pleasant. It was it was really really good and enjoyable um the notes pretty much stayed the same throughout so this wasn't a super complex stick the the flavor profile um didn't vary as i went through it and it's only four inches so it's not like there's really thirds um even halves is is tough to to call out but it it was pretty consistent throughout as far as the uh the notes went i did have a few touch-ups there was some canoeing going on and on a four inch stick that was uh a little bothersome, um, but otherwise, you know, good smoke smoke production. Um, I didn't get that, you know, usually you get to the, the end of the stick, and I did smoke this sucker to the nub, but usually you get to the end of the stick and you, you're expecting that last change in the notes. Um, and again, I didn't really get that there either. So um, for me, this is something like I would smoke on a Sunday morning uh, with a cup of coffee, and uh, I gave this a Stogie Geeks Fiver. Where did you get them? Uh, you can buy them online now. So actually, yeah, I was saying they, these used to be event-only sticks that Caldwell used to give out mm-hmm. um, with uh, other boxes you would buy, and you could get this five-pack. And I guess it became popular enough that they started making more and started selling them. So you, you can buy them now. Um, I got it because there's a, a sister of the leaf, um, again, Christina Barnhill, who's uh, she's just another – cigar lover and she she knew i wanted to try new stuff she sent me a pack earlier in the year and it was it was, and i've enjoyed them since right when you say graham cracker right 
Yeah. Um, are you getting like it's like a sweetness meets tobacco, right? And and okay, you are like it's in crispy. my head like, right now. Like, uh, I'm, I'm not shitting I'm, you. I'm not trying to be in your head, but it's well, you like, are. You no, are. No, I'm like it's crispy. <laughs> like you can you can almost taste like the crunch, right? Are you? It's like, it's. I literally like I write. Well, I start to write this down, right? So uh, I wrote sweet, but I didn't want to write sweet. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, because you you know you want to. It's not that you want to be like ultra creative, but you want to try to find the right words. I but often sweet search for it. them in all of my reviews. Yeah. but S- sweet wasn't the right word. It's like it's sweet, but it's not sweet, and yep. it was like. And then graham cracker. I don't know. That's that's how it ended up on paper. Graham cracker. Like you can almost bite the smoke and taste the crunch. I uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because of the smoke density. And I think you get a lot of that smoke density from a lot of the Caldwell stuff. And uh um, you know, I, I've been on a, a a Caldwell kick. You know, Me Lost too. and Found at Cookie Monster. Uh I've had the Mad Mofo. I've been on those uh for last six weeks or so. Um you know, uh, I had that Eastern Standard, the Midnight one, the DACA one. I haven't tried those uh, yet, those I'm, standards. I'm kind of digging the regular one first. Uh, it's a little bit more potent for me. Um, but, you know, uh, yeah, I've, I've been on a Caldwell kick for, for the past six six weeks myself. You gave me the Gateway Caldwell stick, uh, the uh, Bad Mofo. Yes. Mad Mofo. Mad Mofo, yeah. Yeah, I'm a fan. I I. I Two boxes of those within the past eight weeks. Um, smoke, oh, wow. <laughs> smoke my last one yesterday. Smoke them? If you it, got them, smoke them. Yeah, I would probably get more. I might wait a little bit because, you know, you got a lot of super cool things coming out this year. Black Friday 2019, um, which I bought a box. Um the Arto Fuente and Yayo Shock comes out this time of year. Um, you know, I got a lot of things that I'm I'm getting uh, there. Of course, I'm going to get my blue bonnets from the Well Rojas. So I'll probably wait a little bit for those Mad Mofos. But that Caldwell Mad Mofo, like like that stick six six to eight weeks ago, really got me like back into the brand. Yeah, it's great. I uh, I ended up buying a box as well after I smoked like two or three of them. I'm like the hell with it. I'll just buy a box. Yep. Um, they they're they're that good, and I've been enjoying. It. And I've tried their other stuff too. You have any yellow cakes in in your uh, humida? I have, I uh, believe, one left. Oh, okay, that's cool. I'll call. <laughs> I'll call Caldwell and have them ship them. That's fine. I got I got to get a box for all the cigars <laughs> I'm going to bring you. <laughs> <laughs> like a pirate, right? <laughs> You know, just throw it up in the baggie, right? I'm having a machine gun Kelly next, right? This thing is freaking awesome. You like the red velvet? Yeah. This... I got to look. That could be Noel Rojas does a lot of work with Ezra. That that could be a Noel Rojas. I can't say for that sure. I'd would have to be, go back and look. That would be the second time in my life time that I've, like, named a bunch of different sticks and someone had said, hey, man, that that's that blender. Really? Yeah, it happened to me with uh, Donna from the Humidor back in the day when I used to go to her shop to hide from my employees. When I had six, I used to go to my to the cigar shop to get my work done because <laughs> I never got right. done in the office as I was owning the business. And um, you know, it, it it was like I was like, yeah, I like this stick, this this, and different. And she's like, yeah, you like the roller. And she told me who the roller was. This is way pre into my like research phase of cigars right i was just like a consumer geek uh destined to be on stogie uh stogie geeks right and and she's like yeah you like the roller i'm like really they're really made from the same way she's like yeah and she educated me and it was super cool and uh i wonder so check that out let me know awesome let me know cool i had the la roma de cuba monarch uh this is a a six by 52 toro size uh, wrapper is Connecticut Broadleaf. Uh, binder and filler are Nicaraguan. It's make it's ranked medium to full. I kind of agree with that. La 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 Roda. La Aroma de Cuba has it's one of those blends that like like you got to stay on because if you don't, it's gonna be really strong and catch up with you. 
if if hmm. that if that can make sense uh there uh so i i would give it uh definitely definitely a uh medium to barely full ranking for sure uh lit that thing up you get classic nicaraguan pepper boom then you get like leather like i was like get i bullet cut it was getting some leather um scotch cocoa nothing crazy uh had it with my morning coffee yesterday and i'm like wow like yeah definitely digging uh this stick uh for sure um I'd recommend that like you you would keep this in your rotation, right? For sure. Um, if I were to give it a rating, it, it's tough rating, right? Like, would I buy a box? Probably not. Um, would I smoke ten within a year? Absolutely. So I guess it naturally has to be a box split, right? A uh, box split there. Um, you know, it's not really like. It's not quite box split with a friend. There's really not much of a story uh, there. Um, but it, it, it's got some really good flavor. And the retro hail is not as strong as the regular keeping it in your palate for me. But the retro hail is, is a totally different direction from the cigar. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Good. These are my- I got it out of my head, so at least it somewhat makes sense, right? Uh, but But it's just tasty. And like the smoke content really like like really lingers. Um it really, really lingers there, uh, for sure. Uh and and um, you know, definitely looking forward to uh smoking more and definitely looking forward um to having um I'm sorry, someone just walked into the studio and and like thought they were at the Havana Scott shop, like crazy even though it's a big oh sign God. yeah like real like i'm i'm losing my train of thought let me stop let me pause Except, i'm so a big for, fan at, uh, well, so speedball. for those I, I i need two seconds I'm, yeah yeah well, i'm oh. giving you a chance to collect collect your thoughts from the break-in no i, I honestly <laughs> if you want to know what's going on if you're listening uh it was a fire alarm guy and he's like giving me the look like yo man i'm doing the test for the fire alarms no bro like we're we're recording. See the red light? That means recording. <laughs> Jesus. <sighs> oh my Yeah, you've done that a lot. <laughs> I can't freaking win today, right? You know, first this guy wants me to take his name off his freaking Story Geeks website because he realized that we had more li- listeners than Nelson's mom and my mom, right? Um, <laughs> you know, and and then he wants to take his hey, name off. Hey, everyone listens to my mom. Right. <laughs> That was a crazy time. Right. Anyway, so getting back to the stick, right? Uh, towards the end, you get a little bit of hint of chocolate, but it's not quite there and whatnot. To me, leather trumps all of the other other flavors for there. I'd give it a box split. Check them out. They've been around f- forever. Yeah. Enjoy. They have cool ashtrays. I like their ashtrays. Okay. I like it. Anything else you want to add, Nelson, before we wrap up the show? No. Hey, thanks for having me again. Uh, really enjoyed the interview with Lee. Stogie Geese, check it out. Uh, episode 348. Uh, great interview with Stone Throne Cigars. Uh, and as always, Joe, thank you very much. Your gracious host. Hey, man. Let me tell you something. At Stolen Throne, I'm glad you introduced me to them. Like, full credit, Nelson introduced uh, us, Stogie Geeks, to Lee. Super cool found, find that you found he's, him. He's a good dude, and I I love his business poise. I love how he's uh he just you just get it right. You just there's just some people that you are just like yeah man like they're gonna come up with some super cool stuff. And he's got fire hats, man. That's true. This hat. That's true. That's true. I can't believe that you're like rocking the hat and I love this hat. <laughs> I love this hat. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, Story Geeks, we are coming close to Thanksgiving. So uh, happy Thanksgiving. I did speak to Drew this morning. Uh, he is in a uh, business transition, so he's been not able to make our uh, time deadline on Fridays. Uh, so he uh, is back in action 
Hopefully, uh, sometime soon, he's going through a little bit of a business transition, so we do miss him. Um, just let you know some programming notes. Uh, we will not be on next week. It is uh, Thanksgiving, and I want to wish, uh, on behalf of uh, Nelson and Drew and myself and Paul, all of the Stogie Geeks listeners who have been um, following us and listening to us uh, over the past year, I uh, want to wish you uh, much thanks. Uh, we, we're, we're very thankful that we have a, a great audience. We have great interaction with our audience. Um, I believe our next show should be the cigar companies that we are looking out for for and excited about for um, 2021. Uh, we'll talk a little bit uh, about um, you know, some of the businesses that we're looking forward to, and we might give some cigar predictions for, uh, 2021. I'm hoping timing wise, Drew can make it. I know Nelson can make it and we can, uh, all do that together. Uh, that is the wish list. Uh, sometimes, uh, business gets in the way of business and we have to, uh, figure stuff out. But, uh, if not, we will uh, figure out a way for all of us three to be together and figure that out. Remember, uh, happy Thanksgiving on behalf of Story Geek staff and Johnny and Gustavo and everyone. We all wish you guys happy Thanksgiving. Get out there with your families and be thankful. If you can't be uh, with your family because of any restrictions, just be safe. Use your good judgment. Wear your mask. Grab some hand sanitizer. Definitely grab a stick. And maybe a Bloody Mary and, and uh, ride the ride of 2021, 2020 as we go into 2021. Nelson, I want to thank you for appearing on this episode of Story Geeks. And remember, Story Geeks, we, we keep the conversation going all week long. StoryGeekGeeks.com. Visit us on Facebook.com forward slash Story Geeks. Email all of your complaints to Nelson at StoryGeeks.com. Remember, behind every cigar, there's a story worth knowing. Get out there and shop local. Make sure you chill with your brick and mortars. Give them support and love. Story Geeks, we'll see you next time. Peace.